Hey, my name's Brendan from Knitwits and Yarns. Welcome to my free tutorial video. This is a video that will be explaining how to make one of my retro style beanies. The video itself will just be going through the fundamentals of the pattern. If there's anything you don't understand, I will post the links below of each individual technique that you'll need to complete your beanie. So let's get into it. First things first, I'm just gonna show you the three beanie options. We've just got the plain one, a bit shorter. We've got a tighter fit, with the pattern without a pom-pom and we've got the retro style slouchy the one that I'm wearing right now alright so let's get into what yarn I'll be using it's a double stranded pattern and it's knit in the round so this is the Cleck Heaton Country it's an 8 ply yarn which is DK in the US and UK obviously pick the yarn that suits you best it's a 50 gram ball which is 1.7 ounces and we'll need about four for the slouchy, the large slouchy with the pom-pom. If you're not gonna do that, then you might need about two or three for a large without the pom-pom. The other thing is it's a 96, uh, 95 meter ball of yarn. That's 104 yards. Secondly, we've got our circular needles. So they're eight millimeter needles. That's a size 11 in the US. I've got a 50 centimeter cord on here, which is 20 inches. We've got a pair of scissors. We got our tapestry needle, bunch of stitch markers, and the pom-pom maker. If you're not gonna be doing a pom-pom, obviously you don't need this, but I would highly recommend going out to a store and grabbing one of these. So the first thing that we need to start on is the cast on, which is in the round. If you don't know how to do this, then I have included the video in the blurb below, but let's get started. I'm casting on now. This is using two strands, just remember that and also using the long tail cast on method. I'm gonna be doing the medium size, which is 58 stitches, and it's in the round. So cast on 58 stitches in the round, and then your next step will be to do the rib, which will be a one by one rib. I've now cast on 59 stitches, so I've cast on one extra stitch. With that extra stitch, we move it from the right needle to the left needle. We knit those two together from the left needle, and that will reduce your stitches by one, so your 59 now becomes 58, and it will also close the gap. Now we do our knit one, purl one, rib. So knit one, and purl one. And continue this all the way around. Put down a stitch marker on your first stitch, and that marks the first row. And then we continue this for 14 rows in total. We're coming up to the stitch marker. This stitch marker represents your first stitch of the first row. Just simply knit past it and continue knitting in the round until you get to your 14 rows in total or your desired length. I've now done the 14 rows of rib and now I'm working on the body of the pattern. The body is just done in stocking net stitch. So when we're knitting in the round, that just means that we're knitting every single stitch. I've placed the stitch marker on the first row so that's going to indicate that that's row one of the pattern. The pattern will be 26 rows in total, and this is when we add in our color variations. So I'm going to be adding in some maroon. Um, I'll also add in some different uh, color schemes on the pattern. So something like this or like this one as well. So I'll add that. That's completely up to you. And you can either follow my recommendations or you can make up yours completely but this is 26 rows for the standard slouchy beanie. If you wanted to do it shorter, then by all means do that, or if you wanted to make it longer and more slouchy, then that's also an option for you too. So we'll just work on this, knitting every single stitch in the round. I've now done 10 rows of knitting and it's time to get into the pattern. I'm gonna be following a similar pattern to this one here, but I'm gonna substitute the white for maroon. There is a technique for color changing, and it's called the jogless knit. So when you're knitting in the round, it's a very important technique. If we don't do the jogless knit, so this is where our color change happened in here. If we don't do that, we're gonna have a step up in the difference, if in the different colors, sorry. So the jogless knit's very important. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a technique video or a tutorial video on how to do a jogless knit. So I'll add that into the blur below. But this is a very important technique because otherwise, the lines won't match up. So I'll get started on 
the color change now and then I'll also show you at what point I do the jogless knit. Now we want to add our new color in. So the right needle into the first stitch as if we were to knit. Instead of wrapping the first color around, we grab the second color, pretend we're wrapping it around like a knit, pull the right needle under and off, and then carry on as if we're knitting. So I'm going to be doing one row of color two, which is the maroon, one row of color one, which is the white, and then I'm going to do a big block of the maroon. We don't have to do the jogless knit if we're just doing one row of each color, if the color change is just one row. It's when the color change is more than one row that we need to do the jogless knit. But I'll explain this and I'll show this in another tutorial and the link will be in the blurb below. So I'm just going to carry on with this and then color, color change into the white and carry on. So we're one row around, we grab the white one back again, wrap that around the first stitch and carry that back around. Just pull on that loose maroon and that will kind of make it a nice even row. I've now done the one row of maroon, one row of white. You can see that those match up. The next row around will be when I have to do the jogless knit. So it matches up when you're doing one row and one row, but when you're doing multiples, this is when you need to do this technique. I'm up to the jogless knit part. So I want to show you this. If I don't do the jogless knit, this is what's going to happen. You lose the white stitch in there. What we need to do is I need to unpick that back to where I was before. And I need to lift the white stitch from underneath, flick it over the top and knit those two together. And then what will happen is we'll end up having the white stitch matching up with the other white stitches. So it's a pretty easy technique and then we keep knitting around. I'm a couple rows into my colour change. This is where the jogless knit happened and you can see that it's pretty well disguised. This is an earlier beanie that I previously did. It's not as done as well, but you can see that this white stitch here is pretty much two stitches. So it's one stitch, but it is the size of two. We're also gonna to have to do a jogless knit when we change from the maroon back to the white for the decrease and the crown. I've now finished with the maroon. So I've got one jogless knit in here and I've just got one that I've done right there. So it just takes a little bit of practice. This one's nice and even, pretty much perfect. This one's one that I did last year and you can see it's not as, as nice. So it just takes a bit of practice. The thing with this pattern is that when we get up to the decrease part, which is the crown, we're gonna need 56 stitches in total. This one currently has 58. So on the 25th row, which is one row before the 26th, which is our last pattern row or body row, we have to decrease two stitches. So from 58, it goes to 56. That's for the medium size. For the large size, you will be knitting with 60 stitches. You need to decrease four stitches evenly on that 25th row. So just keep going and I'll get to that decrease row and show you that. I'm on the 25th row now, so I need to decrease my stitches by two. You just have to knit together, knit two together. So I've decreased one, and then I'm gonna do that on the other side. You just do that where you feel fit, just has to be kind of an equal amount of stitches. Don't do two decreases right next to each other. 
and then on the 26th row, that's our last row, we just knit all the way around and then we come up to the decrease. I'm now on to the decrease row. So we have the first stitch marker up to the second stitch marker. That's our 14 rows of rib. We have our 26 rows of the body and remembering to do the decreases in the 25th row if need be. And now we start on the decrease. So I've done the first stitch, chuck on the last stitch marker just to keep count. So the pattern will be knit five, one, two, three, four, and five. Then knit two together and repeat this. So five, and then knit two together and repeat all the way around. And then the row after this will be a complete knit row. And then after that, it's another decrease row. So it will be knit four and then two together, then a whole knit row. And eventually the last row will be knit two together all the way around. And then you're done, ready to sew up. But this is all explained in the pattern that will be available to you. I'm eight rows into the decrease, so I've got two more decrease rows to go. As you can see, it starts to get a little bit tight at the top. You can change to double pointed needles, or you can just try and push the cord through the gaps and make it work for yourself or somehow. You can always change to double pointed needles. I just like to do it this way. It's not conventional, but it works. So I'm now onto my last complete knit row. I'll just knit all these stitches. And then the final row will just be knit two together all the way around. And at the end of all of this, I believe, I haven't got the pattern in front of me, but it should be eight stitches remaining in total. Then we can weave in the loose end, sew up the other loose ends, and then ready to make the pom-pom. So now it's two together all the way around. I've finished off the knit two together row. So that's the last row. We have eight stitches remaining and I've cut a 30 centimeter tail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew that tail into each of these stitches and then pull, and then same on this one, last four, just thread them on, and pull, so we don't need the needles anymore, that they're, they're all done, pull on that, and then what we're going to do, is we're going to thread that back around that little bump at the top of your beanie. And then on the last one, just sew that back into the beanie. All right, so we're all done. That's your beanie, that's your completed beanie. You can leave it as is, or you can add the pom-pom, and I'll show you how to do the pom-pom shortly. We need to sew in the loose ends, but with the power of television, I'll simply click to the next slide and it will be all done magically. And just like that, we're all sewn up. And I mean, it might look a little bit rugged and rough in the on the inside, but on the outside, nice and straight, everything's lining up. And it's just time to get stuck in to the pom-pom. So get yourself one of these pom-pom makers and you simply wrap the yarn around this. What you wanna do, you just wanna wrap it around nice and tight. So, just keep on going. This uses about 45 to 50 grams of wool. That's pretty much a full ball of yarn. So that's, I think I said 1.7 ounces if you're in America. So it does use a fair bit, just bear that in mind. If you do different color schemes, you might be lacking in certain colors, depending how much yarn you've bought. You can always make multicolored pom-poms. That's completely up to you. But you want to do it nice and tight and you want to do it nice and evenly as well. 
you want to make sure that everything's nice and even. You don't want to favor certain parts of the pom-pom because you will have an, a non-circular pom-pom, I guess, and that will mean you have to trim more. So try not to favor the middle and put too much yarn in the middle because it will kind of be more like an oval. But you can always trim it and I trim all my pom-poms to make them nice and circular and nice and uniform. So once we've done this side, you want to do it so it's flat at the bottom. That gives you a nice full pom-pom. Then you just want to transfer the yarn onto the second part and finish that off. I've jumped the gun a bit on this one. I It was completely full. Then what you want to do is you just want to cut along this line and that will separate the two. And I've already started to give it a little bit of a trim. What we then want to do is we want to grab two pieces of the yarn, quite lengthy pieces, and we want to bring it in between the pom pom, the two pom pom sides, and wrap it around a couple of times. Don't just do the granny knot, wrap it around a couple of times. This will anchor it. Make sure it lines up and give it a nice pull. And then just a simple granny knot. I like to do two pieces because then once we start sewing in, we end up having four strands that we can sew in. So unclip this, pull it out, and there we have our finished pom-pom. Now we need to give this a trim. Sometimes they can be quite heavy. If it is, that's going to pull on the top of your beanie a bit more with the extra weight. So by trimming it, you actually do lose a little bit of the weight and it's not so dense. Well, it's still gonna be dense, it's not so heavy and it's not so big. So we just give it a trim, try and make this nice and even, take your time if you want. And then it's time to anchor it and then the beanie is all finished. Right, so I think that is nice and circular maybe a few little bit a few bits more but just go until you feel comfortable remember if you cut it you're not going to be able to get it back so don't go too crazy on the trimming but there we go ready to sew it on now what we want to do is we want to get these four strands inside the beanie so i've turned the beanie right side out now separate the four strands, grab yourself a relatively small crochet hook, find the spot or find a spot, pull the first strand, uh, pom pom strand through, so grab that, pull, so that's in. Then you want to match up, you want to find the next one. What I recommend is you can see how far my... So there's the centre. Here's the centre of my beanie. You want to bring that strand quite a bit into... Uh, away from that centre part. Because that will give you a nice anchor point. And it will make your pom-pom more sturdy. If you have it too close to the very tip, I guess the apex of your beanie, then it's going to be really wobbly and loose. So try and anchor it a little bit away from that center point and that will make it nice and sturdy at the top. So last one. Then turn your beanie inside out. This is why I like having four strands as well. Simply Go to the opposite one, tie it up, pull through, and I'll sew these in later. I probably also should have used white strands as well, just to blend in with the white at the top. And just remember, not your yarn's not always too strong, so don't go pulling and yanking at it too much. But here is the completed beanie, and you can see it's nice and anchored at the top doesn't flop too much. The last step is just to 
grab your tapestry needle and sew in the ends to the top or to the inside of your beanie just secure it in I just sew it as I see fit but if I used a white strand that would probably would have been better would have blended in nicely and just finish off the rest of them ready to try it on and here we have the final product the retro beanie in all its glory I really hope you enjoyed my first free tutorial pattern. The downloadable link is can be found on Ravelry and also in the comments below. So this specific beanie here, this is a number of different color schemes that I've added into the pattern. So I think there's maybe about six of them. They consist of varying ribs, uh, bodies and crowns and also the pom-pom if you choose to add one. So you can just follow the different schemes that I've included in the pattern or you can choose your own so it can be shorter or longer different colors it's completely up to you so I really appreciate everyone's support in this and if you need any support you'll be able to find the individual techniques in my YouTube channel so I've got tutorials linked to that and lastly if you do enjoy this video please subscribe and like and comment because everything helps so if you want to see any more please just subscribe, like and comment and I'll be able to help you out with some more videos and good luck.